Okay, so I think we're ready for your tips, your three mm -hmm. crucial tips. I can do that and then I can tell you why I do what I do. And then, yeah, and then we're gonna close with um, why you do what you do. So yes, all right. So before you jump into your tips, go ahead and, and share, uh, and maybe this is, but share, how did you go from, we started by sharing that you went to you know school and that you did communications and you worked for an ad agency, et cetera, et cetera. So you're now an essay coach. Yeah. Uh, how did you, you know, what was that path briefly there? And then give us your three tips. Yeah, I always say my life is hyphens. Um, and I think everybody as an adult, we can look back on the dots and then see, we couldn't see at the time how they got connected, but they did. Um, <laughs> so um, my journey is really actually ties into why I do what I do is I love writing. That's what brought me into being ultimately a copywriter and advertising and being creative. Um, that led me to when I became a mom and my son needed me uh, to be home. Uh, you know, he had uh, some delays. So I really kind of backed into being a stay-at-home mom. It was not my intention. Uh, but then that led into my passion about, I love teaching and I love being a resource. So I wrote some books to help local parents, um, you know, like, what do we do in the suburbs with our kids? And it covered a wide variety of things. We published two editions and it did very well. That led into writing on um, a award-winning uh, website called Cool Mom Hicks. And I was writing reviews and again, giving my two cents, which I never get tired of doing. That led to a career in script writing for videos uh, because someone I had written up a review about uh, came to me and said, hey, I wanna start this website. So I co-launched a website and it was all about digital and technology um, geared towards tutorial videos, story told as stories. Uh, geared towards moms and women, busy people. And um, ultimately, then my son was applying to college. And that is what has brought, have brought many people who do what I do into the fold, is being a firsthand witness to this horribly anxiety-provoking, stressful, tense experience of college admissions. And then when I went through it, and thank God I did hire an advisor, so we did have someone that made a huge difference. So one, I was sold like the importance of having a person between you and your kid so that they are not getting it from all sides. They are not um, like absorbing like a sponge your anxiety and your fears and knowing also that someone else is taking care of it like that. That is huge. Um, and then people started sending me their kids essays and saying, hey, I know what you do and I love the way you write and I love the way you think and I've spoken to you and you are able to distill and you see what I'm saying. And once they started doing it, that was the big aha moment for me. And I was like, this is what I'm meant to be doing. I love this. And so I underwent training. I've been doing it for about four years now. I've helped dozens and dozens of students get into their dream schools. I will not be one of those people who says, I will get you into the Ivy Leagues. If you want to get into the Ivy Leagues, yes, I have kids who've gone to the Ivy Leagues. Dream school for another person might be going to Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, which it was. It was the perfect fit for him. He got into other schools. I don't believe in asterisks. There is no having to explain where you are going. He's going to the right school. And um, that is why I do what I do. So I did jump the gun. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. I love and you that know, is right. And then, yeah. And then I founded College Essay Helpers and my motto came off the top of my head, less stress equals better essay. Like that's, I, I believe in taking the temperature down because I'm very passionate um, and concerned about the mental health crisis of our teens. And um, I also know that I did everything wrong as a parent. All those things that I now preach to parents, don't do this. I did. So mm -hmm. I, I also take it from that perspective is, is a no because I did it. So. Well, um, you know, the fact that you got help and knew enough to get help when your child was going through the process 
bravo for you. Uh, I can't tell you how many um, families I deal with, especially those that I deal with, that I work with one on one, private one on ones. Um, they say, I want my relationship with my son or daughter is more important than this. I, so I need some help, someone t- so that I can just love and cheer them on and know that someone else is guiding them. So, yeah. It's very hard when it's your kid. <laughs> it's very, very, very hard. Um, what we perceive as encouraging, they perceive as pressure. Well, anyway. And, and it is very different. <clears throat> Expectation from an outsider is just that. That helps guide them. But, you know, the, they know. They feel it coming off us. And, and it's just, it creates a very unhealthy dynamic in a family and it creates a, an unhealthy dynamic for a child. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too much. <clears throat> Parents, we're gonna get to her three tips right now, but um, write this down. Whatever your relationship is with your son or daughter, right this moment, the admission process is only going to exacerbate that. So if you have a fabulous, good working relationship with your son or daughter, fabulous, that will, this will only highlight that because you'll be the same encouraging and positive person. But if your relationship is strained for whatever reason right now, and it, I'm sure it's only temporary because they, you know, we have ups and downs with our- Well, they're teenagers. Yeah. They're teenagers, so <laughs> we have ups and downs. So if it's strained for whatever reason, make that first your priority to get right, get it right, and then get on this on this train. Because it, uh, if it's strained, it's only going to make it worse. So, okay, with that, um, all right, I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear these three top tips. Oh my uh, gosh, the pressure's on. By the way, your first tip, if you have a great relationship with your kid, I say definitely get someone because you want to keep it that way. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Great relationship with my kid and not nearly broken. Um, okay, my biggest tip, and this goes for everything, but especially your essays, start early. Okay, like I say, once the, your son or daughter is past their APs, because again, you don't want to put more pressure, let them get past the AP, which I believe is May, right? Then have them start this process so that. Day one, they step into senior year, their essay is done or very close to being done because you cannot believe all the stuff that you're in for with all the rest of the applications. And by the way, the supplementals will have only come out in August and sometimes later. So you are, you know, for you parents who are like, oh, we'll apply to 20 schools. That's a heck of a lot of supplements to get through. So um, they're going to have their hands full. You're going to have college tours. You're going to have testing if you're doing it. So number one tip, do it early. All right. Um, My tips are going to be a little more hippy-dippy maybe than the concrete ones. But the second one is to explain clearly. An essay is a reflection of something, of things that have happened to you or things that you are interested in. It is not a recap. It is not a word for word. I say it's not a deposition to a kid, okay? And nor is it your resume. Parents, please listen to me when you are trying to, and I'm finger quoting if you can't see me, be helpful. You're not helping. If you're saying, oh, but don't forget, you know, you did this and don't forget you did that and make sure that they know that you were, that that is not what the essay is. The essay is a story, okay? So when you think of it, students, as a story, it becomes a whole lot less daunting, in my opinion, and that's what I found. Once students realize, I'm just telling a story about myself, and through the brainstorming process, I'm going to know myself inside and out in ways I didn't even expect, Uh, then it's a lot less daunting. So remember, it's a reflection, not a recap, nor a resume. And the third one is, and I feel so passionately about this, is starting young. And I'm not a proponent of like starting to stress about college early. This is one thing I will say. When you are whatever age you are, nurture curiosity. Teach your children to nurture their curiosity. And what I mean by that is if they show an interest or a passion or an obsession with anything, 
have them take it a step further. So by that, I mean, if your student has spent a lot of lockdown or over the summer playing video games or watching YouTube videos, my son watches so many YouTube videos, is maybe if they're interested in a specific type of video, encourage them to do their own YouTube videos. Encourage them to uh, be creative in that way or explore and do a deep dive into the content creators that they are impressed by. Teach them to do the kind of research they might do on something kind of what is silly to us in a way like do a deep dive about that creator, read articles, listen to podcasts that they might be on, subscribe to things. You know, these are things that adults do. You are training adults. So nurture your kids' curiosity. Um, I love that there are people who also uh, do things like maybe during lockdown, they start watching the British break baking show. They dis dis discovered they have a passion for baking. And then they ended up creating a side hustle um, and started a little business. So they're learning about finances and marketing. And maybe there's a component there that there's science people who all of a sudden are really involved with baking. And there's a lot of overlaps with people who bake and people who are into the sciences. There are so many opportunities to, to nurture your curiosity. Um, and the last example I'll give is there's a young lady who lives in California. She is a super funky, quirky, unusual kid. She plays banjo and she has a bunny rabbit and she's just the most unusual creative family. Parents are both scientists. Her mother works for the CDC, like incredible. During this, for whatever reason, she got just obsessed with cutting hair. She had never done it before. Guess who has a thriving backyard business? Oh my God. Like, she got a real barber chair. Someone pitched in, a real stylist taught her how to cut. She watched videos. She learned how to color. She, and she's doing this now. I don't know if that's what she will end up studying in college, but that's part of her life experience. Whatever qualities and life experiences that she had, are going to make your, what do we call it, a story much more interesting because you are expanding your worldview. So that is my biggest advice is nurture curiosity. Become a more interesting person because you are more interested in things. Oh my goodness. You just, you know, okay. First of all, parents, champions, uh, coaches, and teens. I hope you wrote all that down, but I'm going to sort of give you a quick recap, and you can also, of course, uh, do it on the replay. But here today, uh, Betsy shared some great tales and um, some great tips for you, and a couple of truths. Here are my truths. Here's what I took away from today. So parents, I say to my parents, my private one-on-one uh, -on -one parents, I say, your only job is to give your child the very best education possible and expose them to as many experiences as possible. And what Betsy hit on today was that, that number three, point number three, about nurturing curiosity. And let me just say again and again, and episode nine is one of my favorites still to this day, and we've had many since then, but episode nine is called Interested Students Become Interesting Applicants period. Every decision you're making right now, from now all the way up until uh, fall of senior year, are decisions that will shape who they become in this application that will bind you only get six to 12 minutes of reading time. It's very short. It's very short. So parents, again, your only job is education, giving them the best education and the best experiences possible. Uh, really curating that, that curiosity so that they become interesting applicants. Students, your only job is to maximize your choices. Your only job is to maximize your choices so that you own the decision of where you go. There's only three decisions in this process, where you apply, where you get admitted, and where you attend. You have complete control over one and three, and all the decisions you're making now 
are helping to shape and maximize as much control as you possibly can with number two. And so what I really love about what Betsy said was um, that this essay is a reflection, not a recap, and it's not a resume. It's a reflection. So again, to go along with giving it as many experiences as possible, trying new things. I love the haircutting girl in the backyard, just experimenting, trying new things. You're just going to be, whether she, you know, becomes a chemist for the coloring, right? <laughs> maybe she's a chemist and a colorist, who knows? Or maybe she'll do something that has nothing to do with haircutting and styling. But how great of an essay that's going to make. How interesting is she going to become to have a conversation with in, a, in an interview, right? So all those things will come through and reflecting on where you have been and where you've gone and where you are now is, um, is the goal of the essay. So that's what I have for you today. Tips, tales, and truths right here. We're feeling confidence. Betsy, before we, I let you go, um, do you want to share with our listeners where they might uh, be able to find out more about you? Uh, obviously, the best place is collegeessayhelpers.com. That has um, all my information, my background, my philosophy, the packages. It's all right there. You don't have to do any deep digging. It's front and center. Um, so you can always reach out that way. I also am on Instagram under College Essay Helpers, uh, and that's a relatively new thing. My Facebook page, obviously, is, say it with me, College Essay Helpers. Um, and lastly, I am new on Clubhouse, where I've been running several rooms a week with other experts to talk about all things having to do with college, not just essays, uh, geared towards parents, with a heavy emphasis on lowering stress and keeping our kids mentally healthy. Which and you introduced me to Clubhouse. I'm new and I'm gonna probably be able to hop in there in the next you know, week or so, but do you have a different handle? How do, how do we find you in Clubhouse? Oh, thank you for asking. Actually, now Clubhouse um, is all about authentic stuff. So you really, um, I'm Betsy K. Dell there. I'm, uh, yeah, so it's at Betsy K. Dell. Okay. It's how you find me. But thank there's you. a search option, uh, but yeah. Just and Kadel is spelled C-A-D-E-L. Um, yes, so B-E-T-S-Y-C-A-D-E-L from College Essay Helpers. And you can also, um, in my Instagram bio, there's a link tree and it'll take you to that and all sorts of good stuff. But, um, and I'm always around to answer questions. I just, as you can tell, I'm a talker. I'll talk. I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, we'll just hang on one time. I'm going to wrap up here and uh, there you go. Okay, parents, teens, champions all around, thank you so much for being here today. If we have provided value, please share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. You can subscribe to Destination at University wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, please do leave us a review because it sure does help others find us as well. You can also join the conversation with other parents on our closed Facebook group or it's, it's open. You have to just fill out a couple of uh, questions and it's all the parents and it's Destination University on Facebook. That is where all our parents uh, live as well. So they're all going through this just like you. So it's a great group to be a part of. All right. Once again, if you found value today, please share this episode with three families in the next 30 minutes. In the meantime, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.